is Q&A time, finally. So I got all the questions here. Uh, I want to try and get this filmed before my long work week begins. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I got my, my questions here. Uh, so we're going to start with a couple questions that I got off of YouTube. So uh, from Manic Expression, the website where I post my videos every once in a while, or not every once in a while, but I, I pretty much post what whenever a video comes out is what I mean. Uh, anyway, uh, T Kuhn, the unusual wordsmith, the third, who comments on every single one of my videos, wants to know: Would there ever be a chance that Pinto? I hope he spelled that name properly. Yes, you did. Doing some solo or even some duo mini reviews with you to cover for days when I can't. Um, Pinto does the uh, regular movie vlogs with me. We also do riffs over on um, VidMe. Um, I don't think so because I don't know if he's really into the kind of thing that I do. Um, he does, uh, he has his own channel though. I don't know if I, I put a link to it in, in every one of the, uh, regular movie vlogs, but he does have a YouTube channel if you ever want to check him out. He doesn't post very often. He had, it's mostly let's plays or game footage stuff. He, he just kind of does it whenever he whenever he wants he's just kind of doing it for his own amusement so um if you ever want to check out some of pinto's stuff uh you, you can uh check out his his youtube channel it's the the mighty pinto or mighty pinto one of those but check check the last regular movie vlog and you'll you'll get the link to it all right this next one comes off of my facebook page jenna coleman cubero 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 I, I hope i said that right uh, have I ever considered doing a crossover with Rowdy Seymour of TV Trash and or Bob Shaw? Uh, Bob Shaw? Shouks? Uh, I actually don't know who that last person is. Um, I, uh, I'm not opposed to doing crossovers with people. The problem is, I really don't have a lot of time to, like, sit and do, you know, script writing with other people and, you know, get up on Skype and, and do that. I, I, I don't have the time. Uh, in fact, I, I barely have time to do this right now because uh, I have to do this and I have to film the next cartoon clip show like immediately afterwards because that's been delayed for a while. Um, but I'm not opposed to doing cro uh, crossovers if I uh, if I don't have to do the, the blunt the the uh, good amount of the work I guess. Uh, I remember I did a crossover with Jamie C of Calm Minds and. Basically, all he asked was for me to watch the movie that he was reviewing and to just send him notes, and he sent me lines to read. And occasionally, I get um, like a message from someone that says, "Hey, can you read a couple lines for a video?" And you know, I'll do that. Usually, um, when I go to film something, I'll sit here and I'll read a couple lines and I'll send it to him. So I'm I can do stuff like that. I mean, if you want me in your video, I'm not that hard to hard to get a hold of. Uh, if you just want me to have a few reaction lines or something I can do that um, maybe one day if things are different I'll be more open to uh, getting to, uh, like working with other people but unfortunately uh, I, I just I don't have the time unless they want to do everything and just let me uh, you know just have me read stuff uh, that's fine uh, as far as people coming into my videos like I don't really I don't know. I don't really write with that mindset. I don't, I don't like, I don't really know what to do with some people. I've, I've heard a lot of, a lot of, uh, reviewers in the reviewer verse, I guess, uh, have that same kind of problem. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm here if you need me, but I, if they want to come to my videos, I don't really know what to do or know if I'll write them properly or stuff like that. So yeah, so I have that kind of problem. Um, but yeah, uh, not opposed to crossovers, but um, for now they're they're kind of uh, they're kind of at a minimum, unfortunately. Okay, now we're moving on to the questions I got on YouTube. So Hitman Fan Six Eight Three wants to know what uh, the most disappointing cartoon is, and oh boy, that's that's a whole video onto itself, isn't it? Um, let's see, disappointing implies that I was looking forward to it in the first place. Because there are a lot of things I was kind of disappointed in, like a lot of stuff uh, Cartoon Network and Disney did, um, you know, like Breadwinners and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting that to be good or anything. Um, I would say probably the Powerpuff Girls reboot, 
because it was so it's so bad it is so bad and i haven't even really been watching it i've been watching other people's videos where they talk about it so i don't give it ratings <laughs> and man oh man the the levels of of awful in that show and the reason why it's disappointing is because i could see powerpuff girls coming back i could have seen them making you know a good triumphant comeback but um they 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 took everything out of the show that made it so good and they put in a lot of other awful stuff that i'm not going to get into like i've i've been i've been hearing things about that show about episodes that i have not watched because i refuse to watch it and man oh man do they cross some lines and it just it's very painful to see to see something like that happen to uh, a very well beloved uh franchise but yeah powerpuff girls is is definitely up there as far as disappointment goes um the ben 10 reboot 2 is uh while while i think it is better than um like powerpuff girls it's still just so just so uninteresting and just and, and it, it hurts because recently they uh, cartoon network showed secrets of the omnitrix the uh the special where Ben goes to find the the creator of the Omnitrix, and I was watching that, and I was like, "Wow, I forgot how good this show really was, especially compared to the current one." And yeah, and I, Ben Ten could have made a comeback as well, but unfortunately, it's just it's hard to live up to you know stuff like uh, the original. I I get that, but man, it just they just really dropped the ball on it. So, yeah, I hope that, that answers answers the question. Uh, Dave Cameron, any chance of a reboot review in honor of the upcoming series? Oh, man, I haven't heard much of the upcoming series yet. I know they announced, uh, they actually did announce it, and they've been talking about it for years, but they apparently they're finally doing it. But uh, outside of the initial announcement, I haven't really heard anything, um, which was well, quite a while ago, so who knows when it's going to come out. Also, the fact that uh, it's going to be partially live action uh, is not 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 really feeling good. But um, uh, just as far as a review of reboot goes, I would love to. Uh, it is a very long series, and that's typically a problem I have with a lot of stuff that I really want to get to. A lot of stuff has they've been going on for a long time. They've uh, have like 65 episodes in some cases um thundercats is over 100 and that's going to be the 100th cartoon clip show so um they'll have to <laughs> that that one's gonna have to wait for a bit um but yeah i was surprised like uh, i remember back when i reviewed cops and jason the wheeled warriors back to back both of those series had like 65 episodes so that was a lot of watching and that's why there was so much time in between them <laughs> <laughs> oh god i'm trying not to do that anymore i'm trying to pace myself like maybe do one long series and then you know short one short one maybe a movie or something like that and in the case of reboot i actually never saw the final season the one that was produced by cartoon network or toonami or rather whatever however that happened um i know about it i, I found the plot kind of interesting but uh, i never got around to seeing it and i'll have to you know watch the series to update myself on it and then eventually watch that so uh, uh reviews are not out of the question it's just uh, a matter of <laughs> a matter of time that's really all it comes down to is i just don't have enough time in the day to do everything that i want to do landon legat wants to know do i like hey arnold and invader zim invader zim yes yes i love invader zim um hey arnold i never got into until like recently because I watched a bunch of episodes, and I have a friend who's a huge fan of Hey Arnold, and she was telling me, you know, what episodes to to watch. And I was watching them, and I was like, wow, this show goes to some pretty dark places. And, uh, yeah, I kind of wish I did initially. I think I've seen a couple episodes during its initial run, but I think that's about when, I don't know, something happened, and I stopped watching Nickelodeon. I think it was uh, when Cartoon Network really started to pick, uh, you know, up its game and they created a bunch of new shows and all that um but I, I did stop watching nickelodeon for a while it was roughly about the time of hey arnold um but yeah i kind of wish i did in fact i actually bought the the dvd sets all the way up there um 
but yeah, Hey Arnold is great. Um, I can't wait to see the the reboot, the movie, or whatever the the, the continuation rather, not a reboot. It's hard. It's, it's hard not to say reboot these days because it seems like everything is getting rebooted. Pinky Pool Gamer Brony wants to know what my favorite Nickelodeon cartoon is. Um, well, it's easy to say Avatar: The Last Airbender because that really is, you know, not not just one of the best Nickelodeon shows ever, just one of the best shows ever. Um, I like that, but in terms of uh, the Nicktoons, Rocco's Modern Life is uh, is one of my favorites, and it, it will always be one of my favorites. And, oh, actually. I think they're they're doing a, a new thing with that too, along with Hey Arnold and and Vader Zim, huh? Well, at least Nickelodeon knows what their what shows they had that were good, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I love I love Rocco's Modern Life. Um, in terms of non animated stuff, uh, well, actually, there, there's a lot of animated stuff that I still like on Nickelodeon. Uh, Ren and Stimpy is still freaking classic. Um, I actually got into stuff like Danny Phantom and My Life as a Teenage Robot much later on. And uh, just like with Hey Arnold, I kind of wish I, I had seen those in their initial run. I didn't even see Avatar during its first run. I, I missed out on the first two seasons. And then I watched them uh, about the time season three premiered. And uh, I was all caught up. And I was like, wow, why did I miss this? Um, but as far as stuff that's not animated, like a lot of their live action programming... Uh, my favorite show they ever did was Space Cases, and it has not been released on DVD, and I don't know why, because Nickelodeon is really, really good about releasing their shows on DVD, uh, more so than any other network, actually, and I was actually going to do a video about that, about how, you know, networks don't see, Disney hates releasing their shows on DVDs, um, Cartoon Network does sometimes, Nickelodeon will, will get your back, I, I just recently saw Loud House Season 1 on DVD, um, so that was really cool. Um, but yeah, Space Cases was one of my favorite Nickelodeon shows. Uh, shame it didn't last longer than it did. Um, and of course it's not been released on DVD. Uh, and it's very difficult to find. Like you can find episodes of it on YouTube, I think, but they're very, very poor quality. And I, you know, I want a good quality version of that show. Um, there was also another show that I, I watched quite often uh, it was called The Tomorrow People. It was on. It was in the '90s, and there's actually a show that came out recently called The Tomorrow People, which is, I think, a remake of it. But I found out that the Nickelodeon one itself was a remake of a British show from I think the '70s or something. So basically, the, the current Tomorrow People is a remake of a remake. Wow. Um, but yeah, I really like The Tomorrow People. Uh, I like. I like like sci-fi. Uh, you know, adventure shows for kids. In fact, I'm, I'm kind of writing one from, uh, one of my own, which I hope to turn into something one day. And, uh, st shows like that were kind of an inspiration for me. Um, I hope they also release that on DVD, although I don't think it's as well known as Space Cases is. Um, but then again, Nickelodeon will release some of their, uh, shows that I didn't even think or know were popular, like Hey Dude. They have Hey Dude on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> was anybody out there a hey dude fan i honestly don't remember anything about that show other than it was about it was about cowboys and the theme song was really cool and that's about it is sorry for i think i said that name correctly what cartoon should have a video game based on it oh boy what cartoon hasn't had a video game based on actually no i know exactly the answer two there are two cartoons that never had proper video games masters of the universe and thundercats <laughs> Which is odd, considering Ninja Turtles had a ton of games. Transformers had a ton of games. G.I. Joe even had a ton of games. And a lot of them were really good. Um, uh, Masters of the Universe did have one game, as far as I know. It was on, like, the ColecoVision or something. The ColecoVision or the Intellivision. I don't remember which one. But, yeah, it had a game, and, and that's about it. Never had another game. And Thundercats had two games. One, I think, was released for the Amiga... And I don't even think it came over to the U.S. And it's considered one of the worst games ever because it is one of the worst games ever. It's it's ridiculously hard and the graphics are very uninspired. And then for the... Uh, hold on, I got it up here. Hopefully I don't drop everything. For the new show, they released this for the DS and only on the DS. And this is also one of the worst games ever. And you'd think that like Masters of the Universe and Thundercats would be hard to screw up just 
make it a hack and slash game make it a you know make it a co-op game do something like the um like the uh like the the marvel games the ultimate alliance i think it was the ones where you can like switch between characters and you can fight as a group and all that you can very easily make either of those into a video game and i have no idea why they never did um, actually, now that I think about it, there was supposed to be another Thundercats game, and I remember, I think Guru Larry talked about this a long time ago, um, like, a company was set to make a Thundercats game, but they, like, lost the license at the very last minute or something, but they had pretty much made the game, so they had to recycle it, and it became, uh, the game Mighty Bomb Jack, which is a pretty popular game, I played it myself, it's pretty good, um, but yeah, they uh, they had the license and they they dropped it and it, it turned into another franchise, uh, and it's a shame because like I said, I played it and it would have made a decent game, but yeah, I don't know why um, I don't know why they never did that. Uh, I know there's a lot of other shows that could have had good games, but they they are basically just shovelware. Like I think uh, Avatar had a couple of games. Um, hmm. I think Justice... Did Justice League have a, a video game? Like, the, the Cartoon Network Justice League? Uh, they might have, but if they did, it's pretty pretty much forgotten at this point, I guess. Um, hmm, what else? Danny Phantom would have made for a good game. I think he's appeared in other games. I don't, I don't know if he... He might have, because there's a lot of, like, stuff from the PlayStation era that I don't know about. So, for all I know, uh, these shows did have good games. I've just ne never seen them before. Um, but yeah, I suppose the main, the main ones are Masters of the Universe and Thundercats. They've, they've never had a good adaptation of a video game adaptation and it just, it, it makes no sense. Eastside Show SCP wants to know what is the scariest or most unnerving animated film or series I've seen? Um, Gravity Falls certainly had its moments, although I, I wouldn't con consider that too scary. Uh, Over the Garden Wall was, was was very unnerving, mostly because of its atmosphere. Uh, but recently, I, I've actually been trying to look up animated horror movies, and there really aren't that many. Because I, I've looked up like lists of them online, and you'd see names like Paranorman and Coraline. And Coraline, I think, is more horror than Paranorman is, although Par Paranorman is the, the better movie. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of anime is on that list, a lot of anime anime movies. Um, but I did find two things that uh, work pretty well, and I have them here. One is Extraordinary Tales, which is uh, an anthology of Edgar Allan Poe stories done um, in animated form. And they're really good. I believe you can watch this on Netflix. And the other one, uh, it's right here. Um, this one I saw recently, too. It's called Fears of the Dark. It's a f another anthology movie. It's French. And it was uh, really good. Some of the stories in here are kind of hit or miss. But uh, when, they're, when they're scary, they're scary. Um, this is an independent film too. So uh, you're going to have to uh, probably look for this one. But I definitely wanted to own the DVD of it. Um, but yeah, this one uh, definitely recommend. Uh, specifically the, um, the final story in this anthology which uh, involves this guy right here um yeah these are really good but I, I am very disappointed in the just overall lack of animated horror movies um hopefully someone out there can fix that some guy wants to know do you think that this idea of making reviews slash parodies of sh uh, shows slash movies is going to be a viable career in the future uh depends on if we get to keep our internet uh, according to a lot of sources, they're trying to take out the, uh, get rid of fair use laws and, um, uh, you know, open internet and all that kind of thing. Um, hopefully if that stays, then it is possible. Uh, although there is a lot of saturation and that could be, uh, that is another thing that I kind of attribute to the fact that I've, I've been slowly getting subscribers, um, because there are so many people out there doing this. Um, as far as a career, I mean, if you can somehow make it to like 100,000 subscribers, then uh, I'd say you're good for a bit. Although, personally, uh, as much as I would like to, you know, do this full time, uh, I see this mostly as just kind of a stepping stone to so that maybe it'll open up um, 
you know, doors for me because uh, you get on the internet and, you know, maybe somebody will notice you and uh, say, hey, I like what you do. You Would you like to, you know, do something for me and things like that. Um, for me, you know, I, I would, as much as I love to talk about cartoons, I like to write for them. I've been, uh, me and a friend actually uh, put together a show that we've been trying to pitch to various studios uh, and we're both even both working on our own um personal stuff uh so yeah i mean uh, that, that's kind of what i want to do because i i see that as a good step for a critic you know they say uh they say oh i guess you can do better it's like well maybe i can maybe i need the opportunity to do better um that 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 sounded kind of arrogant but um the the truth is i i, I do i do want to like make my own shows at some point um, so as far as this being a career, it's, it, there's too many variables to say for sure. Um, but that, at the, at best, uh, you can do this and hopefully you get noticed by somebody of, uh, some kind of sig significance, uh, still waiting on that by the way, but who knows, as long as I have time to do this, I'm going to do it. Heat XZ, my question is, did I know about Deadpool getting his own cartoon on FXX? I may have vaguely heard about that a while ago, um, but if I did, it, would probably, it was probably just in passing. Uh, typically when I hear something like that and then I don't hear anything of it for a very long time, I either forget about it or assume it's just not going to happen. But um, uh, I pro if I did, um, I, I probably was very interested in it because I think Deadpool would make for a great series. Um, yeah, I guess... Uh, uh, considering how well the movie turned out, I suppose uh, giving Deadpool a series would be pretty cool. Uh, he d he has appeared in um, like uh, cartoons from now uh, every now and again. Like he was in I think Ultimate Spider Man, and um, it, it seemed to go over pretty well. Uh, it, it is good that they put it on like FXX, you know, like a, a, a an adult oriented network, so they can have more freedom. Because let's let's be honest, you you can have Deadpool, you're gonna want him. Uh, you're gonna want him being Deadpool, you know. You can't, you can't have that on the Disney Channel. You can't have that on Cartoon Network unless it's on Adult Swim, which, but that'll never happen. Um, but yeah, uh, when it comes out, I'll definitely uh, check it out and do a Rob watches on it. Sound waves with three Z's. Uh, would I do a top ten worst villains or villain songs? Um, I was actually uh, when I first started doing this, I was trying to come up with like possible top 10 lists and uh one of them was going to be uh you know top 10 worst villains i had one called top 10 most sympathetic villains <laughs> villains that you you kind of feel sorry for uh i kind of scrapped it a long time ago because i uh, when, when it comes to me and work i kind of like come up with ideas and then i sometimes forget about them uh even if i like write them down i'll end up like pushing the paper aside or i'll if i have it in a document it'll just kind of get buried in, in folders and just forgotten about. Um, would I do, I could do them. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if I will, um, villain songs. I, I feel like that's been done. Um, nostalgia critic did a really good one. I think, uh, Lindsay Ellis also did, did one. Um, worst villains though. Oh man. Um, mm, there's a, there's a bunch I could put, I, I'd have to put some thought into that one. I, I wish I could do more top tens or top fives, but uh, it's with the thing with the thing with top tens and top fives and things like that is I have to research and I just don't. I, it comes back to I just don't have the time to do so much. I have so much that I want to do, but I can't because this is not my job. But you know, um, I could you know, never say never. Tastes like pizza. What a delicious name. Wants to know what happened to my ear. I assume you mean, uh, let me, let me move in real quick. You mean this right here, right? Yeah. Just, uh, just as a comparison, there's the, there's the other one. There you see normal ear, mutant ear. Um, nothing happened to the ear. Uh, I, this is just how it is. It's how it's always been. Um, yeah, I got a little extra bit here and I got a little extra bit up here. Um, I do remember uh, my grandfather actually had the little nub on top. Uh, in fact, I remember seeing occasionally, you know, I've, I'd see someone with a, a nub on top. So I guess it's must be a genetic thing. Uh, I don't really know much about it. I don't know if there's like articles about it or anything. It's just 
kind of there. And then I, I forget about it at times because, you know, it's to me it's normal. Haven't seen anybody with the bit on the bottom, though. Hmm. I don't know. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing happened to it. It's just, it's just, it's just like that. <laughs> uh, used to freak kids out in, in elementary school. God, no wonder I didn't have any friends. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's just like, that's just how it is, man. It looks like I got into a, uh, altercation with Mike Tyson and he just bit a piece off, but, uh, nope, nope. That's just my ear. That's just how it is. TMN Isaac wants to know, have I ever heard of a website called Behind the Voice Actors? Uh, yes, I have, actually, and uh, occasionally when I have to do research for something, I stumble upon it. Uh, although, uh, personally, I find, you know, stuff like IMDb and Wikipedia are, you know, good enough uh, resources for uh, tracking down voice actors and seeing what they've done. Um, although, uh, the cool thing about Behind the Voice Actors is that they give you a lot of... Uh, um, imagery like they'll show you like if a, a voice actor will voice just some incidental character in a random episode of a show they'll actually have a picture of that character so you can look at it and say hey i remember that guy or something like that um it's a very good website you should uh you should definitely check it out if you're interested in voice actors mr pork shop 159 what did i watch a lot of as a kid <laughs> everything <laughs> Man, uh, if you're talking about like a cartoon in the 80s, uh, name one, and I've probably seen it at least once. Um, I'd say 90% of 90% uh, of the stuff that came out of that era, I at least know about. Um, there are a few things that I never really knew about, although I would have loved to have known about it, like uh, Mighty Orbots when I did that review a while ago. I actually didn't know about that uh, cartoon. And after reviewing it, I kind of wish I did because it's very underrated. Um, I actually never knew about Kid Video either. Uh, I think it just appeared one day in like my recommendations on YouTube or something, and that's how I found it. Um, but yeah, uh, I used to watch a lot of, uh, you know, I watched a lot of Ninja Turtles, uh, G.I. Joe, um, uh, uh, Thundercats, of course. Uh, Masters of the Universe. I actually didn't watch a lot of Transformers, which is surprising. I, I, I th believe I answered this in a previous Q&A, but the first Transformers series I saw during its original run was Armada, that, which was, like, way, way later. Um, yeah, I used to watch that all the time. Uh, there's, there's shows that I used to watch, but I, I for some reason, when uh, I may have been, like, just a little bit too young for it, but I never was able to absorb them was um like voltron and robotech and shows like that uh i remember they re-ran those on toonami a long time ago and then i i got uh, you know they uh they they sank in a little bit better um because they are they are fun shows for kids don't get me wrong but sometimes sometimes you can kind of get lost in the uh in the storyline a bit especially with robotech um but yeah that's uh i used to watch that a lot i used to watch a lot of tiny tunes and animaniacs and um, Batman the Animated Series, uh, missed out on Gargoyles, which I regret. That's a, you could add that to the list of shows that I should have watched during its original run. Um, yeah, I, uh, I just kind of, I, I, it just kind of, uh, flew by me, I guess. No pun intended. Um, used to watch X-Men, uh, the 90s Spider-Man cartoon was really good. Um, I don't know how well it holds up today, but I, I did watch a lot of it. Um, yeah, stuff like that. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty much what I've been raised on. Um, oh, another really good one, Mysterious Cities of Gold, which was on the early days of Nickelodeon. I used to watch that a lot. Uh, that is another show that I did remember liking as a kid, but I didn't appreciate until much later because again, it's same, same problem with Robotech. Um, the storyline kind of gets lost on you if you're a little bit too young. But, um, it was still, I, I still appreciate, you know, the, the adventure side of it. Um, I feel like a lot of shows nowadays are missing that same sense of adventure. And if I ever get to make my own shows, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to fix that. Knight's Edge with a somewhat related question. What was the first show I got into? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, cause I remember like when I was a kid, I used to like shows, but as far as like getting into them, um, I don't know. I, 
I suppose I suppose like Thundercats and GI Joe fall into that category. Ninja Turtles as well. Um, I guess uh, like the first show that like truly grabbed me, um, probably Batman the animated series. Um, also uh, another show that uh, has still yet to get a DVD release. And again, I was going to talk about this in another video. Uh, Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates, which was a really good show. And I believe it was the first time I actually felt empathy for a bad guy, which was a, a very, very pivotal moment for your, uh, for, for a young absorber of fiction. When you, when a villain elevates from, you know, Saturday morning villain to like someone you actually feel sorry for, um, that's, um, that's, uh, that's very important, especially if you're gonna do your own stuff later on. Um, hmm, let's see, uh, I guess about Batman, I would say Batman the Animated Series was really the first show I got, like, into, into, like, I was, uh, a lot of the Disney Afternoon stuff, too, like, uh, DuckTales and Rescue Rangers and Tailspin. By the way, uh, if anyone wants to know, my favorite Disney Afternoon show was Tailspin. <laughs> Because it was basically DuckTales, except for, uh, instead of being, um, it, it, it was the same as DuckTales, except instead of a uh, rich guy, it was, you know, a couple of average Joes, and I, I think it made it a little more relatable. Um, yeah, stuff like that is what I first got into. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything, like, much later. Uh... No, I, I guess that's about it. I hope that answers the question properly. Zivad Prime. I hope again. I hope I said that right. Uh, if I say your name wrong, I'm sorry. Um, will I ever do cartoon clip shows on the following shows? Captain Planet, Centurions, Bionic Six, Robotech, Voltron, and Defenders of the Earth. Uh, kind of going back to what I said before. I would love to. There are a lot of shows that I've really been wanting to get into. A lot of uh, a lot of requests too, and even some donations that I got a long time ago. I'm still been sitting on. Um, I would love to, except, uh, I have to find the time and stuff like, um, Defenders of the Earth has 65 episodes. Robotech is a giant series. Uh, Bionic 6, 65 episodes. Same thing with, uh, Voltron has a lot of episodes. Captain, see, uh, I would actually like to do Bionic 6 and Centurions at some point, but, um, I'll have to, I'm trying to, like, fix up the Cartoon Clip Show a little bit. Uh, that's why I said in the, uh, uh, 5,000 episode vlog or 5,000 viewer 5,000 subscriber vlog that I'm ending um, the Obscurathon so it'll free up some more room for me to do a lot of other stuff that I want to do or people have been asking me to do and things like that so uh, again uh, I could uh, never say never just it's just a matter of when that's the, that's the that's the the thing to take away from this. It's not it's not if it's when. Bunk Choi fan two thousand seventeen. Have I ever played any of the Pac Man World games? And if so, what are my thoughts on them? I believe I have. Uh, I think I think I have one of the PlayStation ones up here somewhere. Um, let's see, perfect. Uh, pa yeah, uh, Pac Man World's twentieth anniversary. I have. I think that's the only one I own. Uh, I probably played them before um i don't really have a, a whole lot of thoughts on them i've never played a pac-man game i didn't like i know there are bad ones out there but uh, all the ones i've played i've uh i've never hated uh i remember playing a lot of the pac-man collections on like uh xbox live and stuff like that um but i do i, I do like pac-man it's one of the one of the more fun video games i've played um as far as the world game, I don't really know what the world games do differently. Uh, maybe, um, maybe I just don't remember them properly or not. But um, as far as commenting on them, I guess that's as far as I can go. I I, I like Pac-Man. Um, maybe uh, maybe if I ever get my gameplay channel off the ground, uh, I'll play some Pac-Man games. Schwartzfi, hi Schwartzfi. It's good to see you again. What do you consider to be the worst ending to a cartoon you've seen? And it has to be a real ending, not just the show gets canceled. Um, hmm. I don't know. Typically, uh, typically when a show gets a proper ending, or when they're allowed to have a proper ending, they they usually do well with it. Um, let's see, uh, Samurai Jack recently had a really good one. Um, hmm. Phineas and Ferb also had a really good one. Uh, I don't know if there's ever really been a worst ending 
that I've seen anyway. Um, there have been endings where I wasn't entirely happy about how it worked out. Um, I think a good example of that is regular show. Uh, the regular show ending was amazing, but there were just a few things about it I, I didn't really care for. Like uh, what happened with Mordecai, about how he became like a starving artist at the end. Spoilers, by the way. And he ended up hooking up with some random girl that we've never seen before. Um, it would have been nice if he got back together with like Cloudy J or something. I love Cloud. I love Cloudy J. I do not like Margaret, but <laughs> I'm sorry. Margaret reminds me of too many girls I used to know. Um, but uh, Cloudy J was cool. I would have liked to seen like maybe uh, maybe he becomes a starving artist and Cloudy J like hooks up with him again and helps him get to get his life back on track or something like that. Um, yeah, this, uh, little little things like that just are kind of disappointing. It's not a bad ending, but um, it worked out nicely. Uh, let's see, trying to think of any others. Um, let's see what what has had proper endings. Um, sometimes uh, maybe it seems a little too abrupt. Uh, I remember the ending of Chowder was kind of uh, kind of came out of nowhere. Um, was a decent ending. Don't get me wrong. It was it was good. I didn't I didn't hate it or anything. But sometimes uh, you know sometimes I just nitpick. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would say I've not seen a bad ending to any series, but um, there, there, that's not to say there aren't any. Maybe I just haven't seen it. Maybe it's a show that I've not watched, which is hard to imagine. But um, yeah, I, I haven't seen any really bad endings. Just you know, so, stuff like the regular show. Just you know, where it doesn't didn't seem to quite work out properly. Indigo Delta three eight three. Which movie, TV show, or comic book would I like to see turn into a cartoon? Oh boy, um, so many. That could be a video on its own as well. Um, actually, considering the recent news with it, <clears throat> I'd like to see, and I, I think I have said this before, I want to see them do a Hellboy animated series. Um, because they did so well with the, uh, where, are, where are they? The, uh, or here they are. The hell, the two Hellboy animated movies. Those were really good, especially considering I found out that they're a lot closer to the comic than the live action sh uh, movies were. Um, and I did like the live action movies, although learning about uh, the comic really kind of put them into perspective. Um, but the reason why I say recent news is because they have announced Hellboy three or either Hellboy three or some kind of reboot. And what sucks is Guillermo del Toro is not directing it and ron perlman is not going to be playing hellboy and that's when i was just like nope nope not not interested like with del toro i can kind of understand because he's a busy guy you know he's working on movies i think he's uh working on pacific rim 2 he's got like tv shows to produce he's working on season two of troll hunters stuff like that so with him i kind of understand it but how do you not get ron perlman <laughs> as hellboy he, he owned that character. That's like Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine or Robert Downey Jr. playing Iron Man or, uh, I don't know, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as, as Doctor Strange. You know, they, they became the character. It just, it worked. And uh, just without him, it's, I'm sure they'll find someone fine to, to replace him. But um, just without him, it's just, it's just hard to picture. And that's why I said they should do an animated series and just have uh, Ron Perlman just do the voice because he can still do the voice. He voiced him in the in the cartoons as well. Um, but yeah, just just follow the the format that the the movies did. Put it on like uh, Adult Swim or uh, like HBO. Put it on Netflix because we got that nowadays. Um, but yeah, I, I would like to see a Hellboy animated series. They can you know explore the books the the comic books a little more and bring in some of the other characters that i've been hearing about i, I really got to read those books too by the way i've been meaning to read some hellboy um but yeah uh, hellboy the animated series should be a, a series andy up up theme i'm sorry if, again sorry if i pronounced your name wrong uh is there any video review vlog or otherwise i regret making um not really uh Sometimes they don't really turn out the way I want them to, but uh, I don't really... Maybe some of my earlier stuff, but 
uh, it's my earlier stuff. I try to cut myself some slack saying I didn't really know what I was doing. And, uh, you know, if I, if I, if I can go back and redo them, I definitely redo them better, but, uh, regrets. Mm, no, I don't really, I try not to have regrets. You know, I just put my stuff out there and, uh, hopefully, hopefully people watch them. Corey of Private Core, if you were to get yourself a celebrity actor and put them in a room with a famed voice actor, who would you get together? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, if you're going to do that, I would say just go go the full nine and get, like, two really, really just hammy, a, a hammy actor and a hammy voice actor. So maybe, like, uh, I don't know, something like maybe... Uh, Nicholas Cage and Charlie Adler. <laughs> that would be very interesting. Um, oh man. Uh, God, who else? Um, I don't know. Not too long ago, uh, I was watching some old episodes of Ren and Stimpy and I was watching Stimpy's invention and hearing Billy West do some of the most psychotic laughter you've ever heard. And even though this isn't really, well, it's kind of actor and voice actor, I would like to see Billy West meet Mark Hamill and Billy West does Ren from Ren and Stimpy and Mark Hamill does the Joker and they can have like a psychotic laugh off. Oh man, I would, I would love to hear that. <laughs> Nathan Spardlin, what cartoon do I consider to be so bad it's good? Oh my gosh, again, it could be a whole video on itself. Um, we, I was actually discussing this with Pinto not too long ago. Uh, a lot of, like, the early video game cartoons, like the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, is is definitely just so bad it's good. Because it's just so imaginatively crazy and ridiculous that I... It's bad, yes, but it's still fun to watch. Uh, same thing goes with a lot of uh, episodes like Captain N and Legend of Zelda cartoon. Um, stuff like that. Uh, I can name a lot of anime that I consider so bad it's good. Uh, my favorite bad anime of all time uh, is Final Fantasy Unlimited. Hey, hey, another video game one. Hmm, sensing a pattern here. Yeah, Final Fantasy Unlimited is one of the most ridiculous anime I have ever seen. And if you can, watch it dubbed because the dub is terrible. <laughs> or, or rather, a couple of them are terrible. They got like, I think they got like child actors to voice the actual kids in the series and they're just not very good <laughs> oh man just watch episode one of that show and you'll know what you're in for with it um yeah that one's that one's uh, definitely so bad it's good uh i i guess at this point any video game almost any video game thing um there are some that are legitimately bad like dark stalkers uh donkey kong country the double dragon cartoon um yeah I guess video games just have the same problem with cartoons as they do with, uh, with movies, which doesn't really bode well for the upcoming, um, Castlevania cartoon that's going to be on Netflix, but, uh, we'll see. We shall see. Pac-Man Plays. What is my favorite video game? Chrono Trigger for the SNES. I love that game. I remember watching my cousin play it when it first came out, and I immediately begged my parents to get it for me, and ever since I... Ever since I had it, I could never put it down. And I've played it so many times, and that's that's kind of a rare thing to have an RPG with replayability. That You, you get into it so much that you just uh, you constantly be playing it. And especially with that game, because you got to get all the alternate endings, you got to do the new game plus and get all the stuff you didn't get last time. Um, but yeah, Chrono Trigger is, a, a, what is my favorite video game of all time. I have, I have all three copies of it i have it for the super nintendo i have it for the playstation where it came with final fantasy tactics and i have the ds version that came out years ago so i, ha I own it three times that's how you know you love a game when you buy it three times um yeah uh i'm kind of disappointed there wasn't a whole lot of merchandise attached to it um there was uh I recently i found out that there are like figurines like there are little diorama figurines there's like five of them um, I've been dying to get my hands on them, but unfortunately I've not seen them for under $400, which makes me sad. Makes me wish, uh, my YouTube channel was more successful so I can buy them. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. 
I'll, I'll keep I'll keep my eye on eBay. If I see them, I'm getting them. I'll probably do a from the toy bin video on it so I can write them off. But I'll, uh, I doubt I'll be able to do that. But yeah, uh, favorite video game of all time? Chrono Trigger. DJ Skittles 88. What is my setup gear? Uh, I'm guessing you mean uh, all the stuff I'm using here. Uh, I got a Sony HD Handycam. Uh, it's, I think it's like 9 point... Hold on, let me look at the thing here. It's uh, 9.2 9 megapixels. I got a, a Boer microphone, which is not a very good brand of microphone, but until I can afford a better one, that's what I'm using. Uh, I, I got the microphone because um, my old camera died uh, late last year. In fact, the regular movie vlog for Office Christmas Party is when it died, and you can see it dying in that video, which I think is funny. Um, so I had to buy a new camera, and I upgraded to something a little bit better. Uh, unfortunately, um, the for some reason, like I hear like a rattling noise in the camera, and I've heard a lot of people who do videos have that problem, where uh, like the internal mechanisms of the camera get picked up by the microphone. So I went, I uh, bought an external microphone for it. Um, hopefully, I can get a better one. At some point, and I also have a, a studio light that I, I use. Sorry, my nose has been itching me for some reason. I'm sorry if I'm touching my face so much. Um, yeah, I have like a, a, a light box right there that helps uh, light things up. I've uh, been using those for a while, and they help out a lot because uh, there's a lot of like shadowy areas in my room. And uh, if I didn't have that right there, like this side of my face would be completely black. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's my setup. I got my tripod, got my uh, got my computer over there and um yeah not not the not the most uh not the most fancy setup but it works and finally sebastian vilgas movie brat any thought on the recent avengers assemble season especially regarding how captain marvel miss marvel and pink uh pink <laughs> i almost said pink panther <laughs> yes pink panther <laughs> you joined the avenger black panther <laughs> has anyone done that parody Someone should do that. Pink Panther and Black Panther. So, yeah, Black Panther were portrayed. Uh, I'll be honest, I have not kept up with Avengers Assembled. Um, I, I used to watch it a little bit, but I don't know. I kind of got, I, I kind of lost interest in it. And, um, you know, I, I, I think it's an okay show. It's just, it never, it didn't grab me as much as, um, like, a lot of previous versions, like Earth's Mightiest Heroes did. Uh, I have, I, I have checked out an episode occasionally and you know it's 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 a decent show i don't really know much about how they portrayed captain marvel and miss marvel and and the pink panther but <laughs> black panther um so uh yeah i can't really comment on that maybe i'll uh maybe i'll track down those episodes and uh and see for myself so yeah all right so that's the q a video hopefully this didn't go on for very long i didn't get as many questions as i thought i did um, if I did miss your question though, sorry, but, uh, I pray you might've gotten it in too late or something. I'm, I'm pretty sure I got everybody though. If not, uh, if, uh, if you did miss your opportunity, help me get to 6,000 subscribers and you can ask it again. So yeah. All right. So that's my Q and a video. Uh, I got to film a cartoon clip show, so, uh, I will see you guys later.